We're back. This is theCUBE, SiliconANGLE's flagship production. We're live at the Splunk.conf 2013 event. This is the second year for theCUBE at .conf, and we're really proud to be here. Splunk is one of those really smoking hot companies. We've noticed an, a renaissance going on in IT, and you're seeing companies like Splunk behind it. You know, we were at the Tableau user conference a few weeks ago, similarly, uh, uh, ServiceNow, Knowledge13. You're seeing real passion within the IT community to to take on some of these new advanced technologies and develop, change their business processes dramatically because they're driving business value for their users in a way that, frankly, I haven't seen in, in my entire career. Gary Burgett is here. He's the deployment architect at CQ Cloud. Peter Chang is the CTO and vice president at N3N. Uh, these guys are partners. We like to talk about tech athletes on theCUBE, and gentlemen, we consider you tech athletes, so welcome to theCUBE. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks very much for coming on. Gary, let's start with you. Um, talk about CQ Cloud and, and, and what the company does and what you do there. Okay, well we are a, a Splunk partner. So we, we have a, a pretty deep background consulting, uh, helping customers deploy Splunk. And uh, so we, we work on the big data side, very uh, Splunk heavy. And uh, N3N is our technology partners. They have some very cool data visualization and video technology that we've uh, integrated with Splunk for what we hope will be some, uh, some pretty intuitive, some, uh, some pretty impressive dashboards. So at 3 uh, uh, you, you were talking off camera, Peter, you're based in Seoul. Yes. So talk a little bit more about your, your technology. You're saying it's data, data viz and, and video. Uh, what, yep. what makes it unique? We, we have a technology called Pixel on Demand, and basically it, 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 if you go into command and control rooms or a lot of the data visualization that we want to do for dashboards and things like that, we need to integrate uh, lots of videos. There, there are videos, hundreds of videos on the production areas or monitoring rooms, and to, to be able to see all of those videos on the screen, it is very difficult to process. So we kind of have a distributed computing system where we uh, do pixel on demand, only show the pixels that is needed for to display on the screen. That sounds cool, so okay, now, so, so Gary, take us through sort of how you're engaging with customers, some of the problems that they're asking you to help solve as a consultancy. Okay, well, uh, especially in this context, we're working with, uh, with customers in operations, in uh, manufacturers, not necessarily your traditional uh, IT consumers, but they are working with big data, and, uh, but they're not tech types. So they, they want to be able to visualize their data in the context of their systems. They want to be able to, uh, to see their machines, their, their lines, along with their machine data, along with their live video feeds. They need more context and in a more uh, familiar interface. So those are the kind of the demands that we're trying to meet. So they're not tech types, what types are they? They're, uh, they're operations guys. They're kind of more uh, blue collar, they're, uh, again, they're, they're working in big data. They, there's you know, gigabytes, terabytes of data coming off of their uh, systems, but they don't have the background or, uh, yeah. So they're not programmers. They're not programmers. Right, but, they're, they're they're, but their job is to get the, get, get the product or the service out to the customer, yeah. make sure it's, it's working, yeah. you know, but, they're, but, not gonna, but they're, they're not gonna build the solution. Yeah, and so it's not a traditional IT use case. But, but likewise, you know, it's when something goes wrong in their operation, that's millions of dollars in, in losses. We're working with uh, steel companies, uh, semiconductor manufacturers. If, uh, if there are malfunctions in their systems, they, they need to know about it, or that's, that's a lot of money out the window. And how has visualization sort of changed um, their world? Maybe you could talk about that a little bit. Uh, usually, w w on the operation floors, you know, they have multiple systems. You, you know, there are systems for, let's say, SCADA or HMI, ERP, MESs, and operators have to look through different systems, even like CCTVs or the recordings, to solve problems they have. So what we're trying to do is give you a canvas where you could bring in all of those information together, all of different systems they interact, and then have a common interface where they can much more intuitively you know, get the data and have their operation done seamlessly. 
How do the customers refer to the data? Do they actually call it machine data, or is machine data, internet of things, are these, are these terms that we've sort of overlaid on the, and created you know, sort of a parlance that, that spans multiple industries? How do they refer to the data? Do they say, I got this, these machines and it's spewing out all these data and I need, to, I need to visualize them, or do they talk in their own sort of parochial terms? Yeah, that's, uh, that's part of, the, of what we're trying to deliver, is they, they are very much you know, living in the context of, of their operations. They, they're guys that know the machines, they, they're talking in terms of valves or, uh, sensors. or sensors, furnaces. Yes. They're uh, yeah, right. yeah, very much big data, but the internet of things isn't really, isn't necessarily on their radar. No, but like you say, sensors, valves, whatever machine du jour is, yeah. is operating. Okay, so talk about where Splunk fits into the whole thing. Splunk is definitely the, uh, the big, the machine data side of things. You know, Splunk provides this awesome platform for collecting, aggregating all of your machine data, lets you easily analyze it and uh, you know, provide value from that data to the users. So what we, what we try to do in our interface is we use some of those convenient uh, features from Splunk, like the knowledge objects and things like that to, to uh, provide some of that context into the data. So for example, the, uh, you know, there, are, there are maybe hundreds of sensors for any specific process within a plant. We can, uh, we can let the users just search on you know, furnace one, or you know, just one keyword like that that expands the entire context that they want to be looking at. So, so how do you deploy? Um, I mean, essentially you're building, a, is, it, is it an on-premise data cloud, a data factory for, for your clients that you can visualize, is that? Uh, really yeah, that's one way of putting it. The, the deployment uh, process in terms of Splunk is very similar to you know, deployment on, uh, on any other you know, IT use case. We, uh, we build, you know, we set up the Splunk deployment on their premises, we uh, interface with their SCADA systems or you know, whatever data they may need to uh, collect, and we bring that all into just your standard uh, Splunk uh, server. Well, data, yeah, server farm, if you will. So it's early days in this whole, you know, GE calls it the industrial internet, internet yeah. of things, internet of everything, you know, call it what you want, but it's still early days. So your customers, which are operations guys, yes. um, probably skeptics, right? They don't just trust any, any new system. They've, they've seen a lot of systems that don't work, so they're skeptical. Um, and they've got to get an ROI. Right. in its early days. So, talk about the dynamic there, the, the whole business case, uh, how that occurs. I mean, is this something that they know they need? They're, they're dragging you into the situation, saying, thank God you're here, now we can you know, solve these problems, or is it more you know, a give and take, you guys have to demonstrate a little bit of the ROI? Uh, and I would think as well that, that this is a, a long-term strategic, of, of long-term strategic benefit to these organizations, which is sometimes a tougher sell. You got to work it up senior management chain. I wonder if you could talk about the justification process a little bit. You want to take try? that one, Okay, Pete? so uh, the example that we showed on the floor is a steel company. And then usually steel companies, you know, they have to monitor their, their processes, there's a lot of equipment, a lot of data being collected. And when there's problems, they need to do a lot of analysis on their, their data to figure out where the problems were, to, to make the, the equipments more efficient, and also the, to keep the quality of the product. All of those data analysis, and also they have to do a lot, lot of reporting. So uh, by, by giving them more intuitive uh, user interface, and also with the power of Splunk, with all of the data and analytics, they, the, the, the ROI comes very quickly. And also, because of the UI that we're giving on top of Splunk to the operators, not only the analysts are looking at Splunk, they, all the operators, the managers, who are not really you know, SPL experts, can get onto the you know, Perseus systems and be able to start using it. Okay, so, so Perseus is the solution that you guys provide, yes. right? right? And you guys, uh, uh, we, we handle the Splunk end of things, the machine data end. Okay. And these guys are the, the visualization wizards. So, so, so who ultimately does the client, client 
you know, interact with? Is it CQ Cloud? Is it with all three companies? Or how does that all work? Uh, it, it's usually together. Yeah, okay. And then we also usually have a SI partner in front of us who, who works with the manufacturers. Okay, and oftentimes they may bring you in and you're partnering yes. with those guys. Yes. So what's next for you all? Where, where do you see this whole thing going? That's a good <laughs> question. We're, uh, we're kind of following uh, the rabbit hole. We, uh, this actually has been something that we've talked about for a long time. Uh, and we actually made just kind of a mashup of it for a, a Splunk event, actually. And, uh, but the response that we got at the event was kind of overwhelming. So we said, well, maybe we need to uh, look more into this. So what we've done for the past nine months is, uh, is make the integration with Splunk more tight so that users from our uh, editing interface can easily get their sp results from Splunk and put it right into their their canvas. So I think the kind of the roadmap is to just keep making that integration more tight and make that their uh, the interface with their machine data more intuitive and ride the wave, right? Yeah, ride yes. the wave. Awesome. I love the entrepreneurial spirit. Uh, you know, the let's try it attitude. Let's put it together and see what happens. Build it, and they will come, and that's yeah. what happened. Yeah, and they're they're coming. All right, I'll give you guys the last word. Anything that uh, you want to leave our audience with? Just uh, some, some takeaways from the discussion today. Uh, <laughs> do you want to go? Favorite baseball team? Any, any uh, predictions? <laughs> I don't know. We I'm have a, a we have an awesome booth here. Great. So, so what are you guys showing by. at the booth? We're we're showing uh, Perseus. Okay. And we're showing a demo of the steel company that operation that we're showing. And also yeah. another demo is a, a combination of cybersecurity and physical security together. Awesome. Great. All right, gentlemen, well, thanks very much for coming on theCUBE. It's a pleasure having you. Good luck with the, uh, with the future. Thank you very Thank much. All right, you. keep it right there. We're right back with our next guest. This is theCUBE. We're live from Las Vegas. We're at the Splunk.conf 2013 conference. You can, you can tweet us. Use the hashtag PoundSplunkConf. We'll be right back.